Welcome to that fourth clip in our series on Genesis chapter 1 to 11. Today we are reading chapter 2 verse 4 till 24. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field had yet, yet, was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground, but a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils and the breath, the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And that's the first part of our narrative. So basically, we have a lack here, something is missing. There is no vegetation because there was no rain and nobody to till the ground. But there's water springing out. What will God do? It's either He sends a big shower and everybody is as uh, the, the, the plants can grow, or He creates someone that will be able to till the ground to irrigate the land. And that's exactly what He will do. He will create not a man. Our translations are usually a man, but it's really a human being. A Adam, which is not a male or a female, but it's a human being. And first part then of our narration is creating God creates a human being, relationship between the human being and God and the earth, because the human being is created from the earth. The Adam is created from the Adama. First step. Then we would expect the man to till the ground, but that's exactly the opposite that God is doing. It's the Lord who is planting a garden in Eden, verse 8, uh, in, in, to the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the, the Lord made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So this is the second uh, creation. Okay, after creating an harmony between the earth and the human being, the human being coming from the earth, God is creating an harmony between him and the, the, the human being. He is giving him the garden, but with one restriction. He can eat from everything, in, from every tree of the garden, except one, the, knowledge, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now this, will get back to that tree. It's not an apple, I can guarantee you that. It's a mythical tree, okay? And if you know good and evil, it means that you're knowing everything. And the temptation for the human being will be to know everything, therefore to become like God. That's nothing to do with sexuality, nothing to do, to do with good or bad as such, but to, the temptation will be to know everything. Then there's a third step in the, in the narrative where God sees that it's not good for the human being to be alone. Notice that it's not the man who says it's boring in that garden, there's nothing on TV at night. <laughs> it's God who looks favorably on the human being and he tries, God tries to find a suitable help. That's not somebody who will do the dishes and take care of the kid. The word in Hebrew is etzer kenekdo. And it means the kind of help that the Lord will provide. Because in the Psalms, the etzer is often, the help is often God. So he starts by creating the animals. And then there's a question of power. Because in the Bible, if you give a name to someone, it's because you're more powerful than, you, than he is. So the man is giving a name to every animal, and the animal becomes a, a, a living thing. Then. There was no help suitable for, found for the man. And there's this, the rib story. God puts the man, the, the Adam, into a deep sleep. He removes a rib and then he creates a woman and then he brings the woman to the man, not to the Adam, but to the... It's the first time in the Bible we have the man and the woman, Ish and Isha. And then finally a suitable help was provided to them. Okay, and they are in the garden, the two of them, and are, there's a harmony between the Adam, the humanity, and the earth. There's a, a, a harmony between the Adam, the human being, and God. There's a third harmony between the human being and the animal. The animals are obeying the human being because he's the one who gave them name. 
And there's a fourth harmony between the man and the woman. And this is not the same kind of relationship. It's a relationship of equal to equal. Of course, this is not the world who, that we know. We will see how we went from that world, that dream world, to the world as we know it in the next clip. Thank you.